My hair has been a bit of a struggle today, not gonna lie. It's just like extra super dry out here right now, you know? <laughs> such as life. Anyway, hi! Welcome back to another video. First of all, I'm sorry if the audio sounds weird. I'm filming without my mic that I usually have on because I just couldn't take the microphone noises anymore. The crackling and the helicopter noises and the random screeching at unpredictable times. Even though I can clean up the audio a bit when that happens, I'd really rather just see how cleaning up audio without microphone interference goes. So if this sounds a little weird, that's why I'm figuring stuff out. Sorry <laughs> if it's unlistenable. I'll catch you in the next one, I guess. Anyway, today's video is something a little different. I thought it would be a fun idea to review some of the items that I shopped from my stash when I did my posting every day in December thing. Um, specifically items that are still available now. Um, just in case if any of these have been on your wish list or you've been thinking about picking them up, you'll know what you need to know before you buy them. It was really good practice to kind of dig into my stash a little bit and pick out some items that I haven't touched in a while and see how I still feel about them. Um, shopping your stash is a good idea generally to like beat the FOMO about new releases and like go through your stash and see where some older products that you loved and just kind of forgot about that you can start using up again or if there are any products in your collection that you don't love super much that need to be decluttered. Um, so this was just a very good practice generally for me. I do think I want to do that kind of thing once a year, like the 30 day thing. Maybe it'll just be the thing I do in December. I kind of want to do one in spring though, like do a different set of looks. I'm thinking about it. Don't hold me to anything. I don't want to disappoint you. Anyway, <laughs> let's dive right into this. I have a stack of products over here. What, sh what, what should I start with? Should I just go in alphabetical order, like by brand? Because they're all grouped up by brand, pretty much. That seems like a good idea. I'm going to try to keep these reviews as brief and to the point as possible. Try being the key word. You guys, you know me by now. I have three, really two, technically three, um, eyeshadow palettes from Anastasia to talk about. Um, first and foremost, Soft Glam. Good old reliable over here. Um, I did a video using this palette. And I sat and I did three looks in that video using this palette. Uh, you can get a really nice variety of looks out of this. It's just still a really nice, staple, neutral palette. Uh, great for makeup enthusiasts, collectors, and artists alike, you know, whether it's for your personal collection or your kit. Mine has, it's pretty dusty on the inside, I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying not to blind you with the mirror. Um, she's gotten, she's, I'd say she's gently used at this point. That's kind of just the state all my palettes are in because I have too many. Um, but I mean, still very pretty. It's a really nice warm toned neutral palette. There is a reason why so many more affordable brands have tried their best to dupe it at this point, but there's really no beating the formula in here, in my opinion. And I'm really not exactly an Anastasia Beverly Hills stan, especially in it, not in the last two-ish years, <laughs> to be honest. Um, in fact, the next palette I'm going to talk about is the most recent uh, purchase that I've made from them and I got it right when it came out, which was a while ago. This was not a recent release. That is the Jackie Ina palette. <laughs> One of my favorite palettes that I own. Just look at that. Oh, just look at this color story. I know it's probably not for everybody, but it was definitely for me. I was the, <laughs> the most excited about this when it dropped. Um, obviously, I wanted to support Jackie. Love her so, 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 so much. If you don't watch her, I will link her channel down below. You should definitely check her out. And I think that she just really nailed it with this palette. It's definitely a color story that's very true to her. Like, it's just a really beautiful blend of like the soft glam pinks that she loves, the neutrals, the jewel tones, beautiful. Beautiful use of the 14 pan space that she was allotted and the packaging. Come on. Come on now. This is one of my favorite palettes in my collection still to this day. That has been the case for a long, 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 long time. 
And when you look at this color story, it really is just good, like, all year round. It's not, like, specific to a season, in my opinion. Again, you can do a wild variety of looks with this palette, but obviously there's a lot more color to play with here. This is one of my favorite Anastasia palettes that has that they've ever done, actually. And that brings me to the next palette, which is actually my other favorite palette that Anastasia has done. And so, so hard to get a hold of at this point. I feel very lucky to have it in my collection at this rate. And that is the Sultry palette. This is basically like the cool toned sister to Soft Glam and much love to Soft Glam. I love the pink shimmers and the soft golds. I love the warm and the rosy tones. Love, love, love. This is the superior neutral palette for me personally. You don't have to agree. It's just makeup. It's not that deep. Literally wipes right off. But, um, <laughs> come on. I am very partial to cool tones. I love the bronzes and the like kind of pewter shades in here. I love that pop of matte kind of coral red. It looks more red on my eyes when I wear it. Again, really decent variety. There's just so much more depth to this one for me, but you really have to be here for cool tones to get enjoyment out of this palette. So that's worth bearing in mind. But with all three of these, the shimmers are just buttery. The mattes blend effortlessly. They're so like soft to the touch, really rich pigmentation. The Anastasia eyeshadow formula is beautiful. Not the Norvina palette collection stuff. I haven't tried any of those, but I haven't exactly heard amazing things about them. But their original like 14 pan palettes that they do, fucking great. We're not going to talk about subculture. <laughs> We just pretend it doesn't exist anymore. These are definitely my two favorite Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes that they've ever done. Much love to Soft Glam. I get it. I get the hype. Not knocking her. But something about these two um, just really makes my heart sing. And I could not recommend either of them enough. If ever you are given the opportunity to pick up either of these palettes, um, do it. <laughs> you will not regret it. If you do regret it, you can yell at me, but I really doubt that that's going to be the case. I feel pretty confident about that. Next up, from BH Cosmetics. Remember when I talked about BH Cosmetics and what an underrated brand that they are in my last video? Were you paying attention? Uh, the Zodiac Palette. Oh my god, I forgot what a bop this is. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, I love this. I love this so, so much. I was originally actually going to do two looks with this for December. I wound up only doing one because time got away from me. I really love the mix of tones in here. In terms of blending shades, you have like grungier tones. You got your warm tones. You got some pinks and purples down here, which you guys know I love. Uh, all the shimmers are really beautiful. This like baked shimmer formula that they do, gorgeous. This little multi-use shade in here. I usually use it as a face highlight and it's really beautiful. Also, obviously beautiful on the eyes as well as the face. This palette is a 10 out of 10. I want to use it more. This was one of the palettes that I used during that uh, challenge uh, that made me go like, why don't I, why don't I use this anymore? Um, it was a fave for a long time for a reason. So I'm going to get back into using this uh, very, very often. I think it's super fun. I do highly recommend this palette. If you've ever been thinking about picking it up, I don't think it'll disappoint you. I think you'll really enjoy it. Next up in the hot seat is ColourPop. Let me start with something from ColourPop that is not so good. I kind of, actually, I'm not surprised that this is still available. I think most of their Disney collaboration items are still available. I know this one is because I checked that before I filmed this. Um, I've barely used this palette and after dipping into it two times in December, I know why. Um, it's not like I dislike this color story. Obviously the color story must have reeled me in at the time and I still think it's nice. I don't think it's anything worth losing your mind over. I'm not living for it. But it's nice. It's a nice, mostly neutral palette with some fun pops of color. 
Um, and two press glitters. Two press glitters in a 15 pan palette. You fucking kidding me? Yeah, I've used this one once. You guys actually saw me use this glitter. I didn't name it in the video, but when I recreated Miley's makeup look in the Midnight Sky music video, this is the glitter that I use. Um, and I could use it without a glitter glue and I didn't have any mishaps, thankfully, but these are not eye safe. These are not safe for use in the immediate eye area and that's why we all get on ColourPop's ass about including them in their palettes. So just because I used this one one time does not mean I recommend you go out and get their palettes with the pressed glitters and put the pressed glitters on your eyes because if you scratch your cornea, I'm not taking the heat for that, okay? I'm just not. I do not recommend, do as I say, not as I do, and don't put press glitters like these, these big chunky glitters, on your eyes or anywhere near your eye, immediate eye area. Okay, now that that's out of the way. I hate that. I hate that there are two press glitters in here. Two? Maybe if it had just been one, like right in the center here. Just one. Could have tolerated. Two? No one likes the press glitters in a Disney collab, in a collector's palette? No, no one wanted that. No one likes that. I will say it looks significantly better on camera than it does in real life. Um, the rest of the shades in here, fine. Most of the like neutrals and blending shades, okay. These two shimmers up here, I really like this green shimmer too, but these two in either corner up here, this kind of guy and this guy over here, they're the real stars of the show for me. They are really beautiful, kind of like, they have a very neutral base, but they each have kind of a, like a really beautiful, subtle, but beautiful um, kind of colorful shift. Like this one has a green shift and this one has more of a pink shift. I love both of these shimmers. Um, they're like the standouts in the palette for me, which probably seems really weird, but I just love like a barely there kind of wash of color that kind of shifts under certain lighting and like as you turn your head maybe the green just kind of jumps out at you love that love that for me there have been times when i've been using other palettes and thought oh you know it would look really pretty on the lid with this with this color combo one of those shimmers from that midnight masquerade palette so because of that i can almost justify having this in spite of the two press glitters and in spite of the rest of the palette being pretty much milk toast. But this, this, this deep navy matte blue, let me just give you a, an idea. Bear in mind, it does still look better on camera than it does in real life. This is the worst blue. This is, this is the worst thing the... and it's so disappointing because I know I know that ColourPop does blues really well I have so many blue shadows from literally their monochromatic blue nine pan palette I have that love it great blue shadows there are so many other palettes from them that have blues along the same vein that are better, that perform beautifully. So I know ColourPop handles blue pigments well. ColourPop does blue eyeshadow really well. But this, this guy, terrible. It's one of those ones and it's because of the specific, it's like that navy kind of blue, right? So what it does that is so infuriating is no matter how much you try to build the color up, no matter how many times you keep going back after blending and layering it, you lose the blue because what this basically does as you blend it, even if you very minimally blend it, even if you barely touch it, it turns gray. It turns gray. This is such a huge pet peeve for me with blue, sh with dark blue shadows, any blue shadows actually. And the reason why this makes me so upset, this feels like a betrayal. Okay, because it was this blue, this blue was one of the shades in this palette that really reeled me in. This blue was one of the handful of shades in this palette 
that made me want to get it. So then to buy the palette and have the blue be absolute ass beyond disappointing. This is one where I'm kind of like, it's cute, but I really probably should have thought more critically about it before I bought it. Um, I would not recommend you get this. <laughs> not to be petty. It is what it is. They can't all be hits and that's fine. Now from the same collection though, and I was surprised to see that this is the only shade of this lipstick that is still available like with this specific collection. So to the person who commented on this picture of me and said that you love the lipstick color I was wearing, it is still available. This collection was also actually the unveiling basically of this lipstick formula. Um, this was the first time that they gave us the Lux Liquid Lips was with this Midnight Masquerade collection. So this one's in the shade Flynn. Um, the thing about this formula, you guys know because I've bitched about liquid lipsticks many a time, I am not a fan of liquid lipsticks. I do not enjoy them. There are a couple of formulas that are exceptions to the rule and this is one of them. I was actually really pleasantly surprised by the Lux Liquid lipsticks from ColourPop. They're not like, and that's because all the liquid lips that I typically like, uh, like actually enjoy wearing, it's because they don't behave like the traditional liquid lip does. This formula in particular, it's kind of on the sheer side. It's definitely buildable. It just kind of like cushions the lips <laughs> with color rather than like settling into all the fine lines in your lips and drying them out and looking crackly and terrible. Um, this doesn't do that. This is a really nice kind of like velvety finish kind of liquid lip. Would recommend. Obviously they have come out with other ones other than just the ones that came out with this collection. There's a whole line of Lux liquid lipsticks now. Sorry, I've adjusted a couple times now and I just feel like I cannot get the lighting right in this video. Anyway, uh, this next one's unpleasant. This is actually one that I featured in another video that I did uh, back in June, like late June. I basically did a video where I gave myself a little makeover with the ColourPop Mulan collection. And basically what I got myself was the eyeshadow palette and the trio of lipsticks. And I used this lip gloss. This is in the shade Phoenix. This is the gloss that came with the Mulan collection. I used this gloss just a little bit over top of the red Lux Liquid lip that came with that collection, which is very nice red, by the way. And at the time, because I just applied a very light layer of it, I didn't really get the full experience of how much this sucks. Okay, because I basically used just a light layer over top of the red lipstick um, as like a lip topper situation. Because here's the thing, it's a gorgeous color. This is a beautiful lip gloss, just this beautiful kind of sheer peachy gloss with an intense gold sparkly ship, just beautiful. So when I did this look for my Instagram in December, I wanted to just wear this gloss and try it out by itself because I this is the kind of shade that I would typically love to just throw on my lips and go about my day. Um, this is the worst lip gloss I've ever worn. This is the worst lip gloss I've ever tried and that's trying pretty fucking hard because generally it's really hard to make me dislike a lip gloss. Can't really think of another lip gloss I've ever tried and not liked actually. And it's bizarre because the Lux glosses, this is a Lux gloss from ColourPop, are one of my favorite lip gloss formulas. This guy, do not let him fool you. He is not representative of how awesome that lip gloss formula actually is. You guys have heard me say time and time again how much I love those glosses. So this was shocking. It's shocking how uncomfy <laughs> I felt with this on my lips. It is the thickest, goopiest, stickiest gloss that I've ever had the misfortune of encountering. 
tried literally any of the other Luxe lip glosses. <laughs> there are so many shades at this point. <laughs> Color it's a great lip gloss formula. This guy was a dud. Now, something that you should get from ColourPop, and the last thing from ColourPop I'm going to talk about is the So Jaded palette, which if you've been around for any amount of time, you know, is also one of my favorite palettes that I own. This one and the Jackie Ina palette. Um, they are always, those are always two of my favorite palettes in my collection. Uh, they are definitely in the top five of all the palettes that I own, and also most likely they are two of my top three. I haven't fully decided on that just yet. This is definitely a palette in my collection that has gotten a significant amount of use. It doesn't look like it, but that's just because there are so many shades to dip into in here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Again, there are two press glitters. This was at the height of ColourPop doing the press glitters in every palette thing. Uh, I straight up, I have never used either of them and that is fine. There's also a Super Shock shadow in this upper corner that is beautiful, so beautiful. Sometimes I use it as like a topper shade over top of other shadows to like transform them. Sometimes it's just that on my lips. Sometimes I even use it to highlight my face. It is gorgeous, just like wet looking, kind of sheer sparkle. Love it. Um, usual kind of color pop shadow quality. Look, there's even a dark blue down here in this corner. That's not bad. This is also the first larger palette that ColourPop ever did, and it was in collaboration with Kathleen Lights. If you don't watch Kathleen, her channel will be linked down below. Love her so much. Have loved pretty much everything she's done in collaboration with ColourPop. She's like the ColourPop collab queen. This palette is a hit. Not just like fave ColourPop palette, which it is for me personally. Not actually there's a new contender and we're going to talk about that in the next video so be sure to catch that when that comes out um again just a beautiful mix of tones cool tones warm tones you've got neutrals you've got jewel tones this came out around the same time as the jackie Ina palette and i did get both of them even though i was like you don't need both of them because both of them just spoke to me with the mixes of the neutrals and the jewel tones at that time i was just loving jewel tones and do i regret having both of them absolutely fucking not. They are both so beautiful in their own right. They've come out with three other 30 pan palettes and none of them, if I look at them, like there's not enough variety in tone, which is exactly what this guy has. This one is eclectic, but very, very complete. And like, there is not a single like pairing, in my opinion. It's hard for me to look at this and not immediately be able to put so many of these shades together. Like, I don't think there's actually a bad pairing of shades in this particular palette. Kathleen just did what she does, and she created a color story that is very eclectic, but just everything works together beautifully. Like, no matter what colors you try to put together, they just, they work. Like, she just, she has a really good eye for that kind of thing. It is one of my favorite palettes ever for a reason. Um, I just enjoy it very, very much. Would recommend. Next up, this one's so bad. The e.l.f. Jelly Pop Flush Blush. Don't buy this. <laughs> it's so bad. Not e I have the color Berry Pop. I know that this specific shade I think isn't even available on the e.l.f. site anymore. They still have the other shade though. Don't, don't, it's not a thing about the color, it's the formula. The formula sucks, <laughs> the formula is so bad. And I love, 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 love cream and liquid blushes, typically. It's just, they speak to me on a spiritual level. This truly is like a jelly, though, is the thing. And with jelly, when you disrupt a jelly, think like jello, when you disrupt a jello, start getting into it. What happens? Chunks. This gets chunky. This gets clumpy. It's like clumps of color sitting in a weird, watery, goopy, sticky mess. And it is, it, it, no matter how little you try to go in with, it's too much. There's too much, too much 
pigment it's too much to apply and then you have to go in and and it's messy and it's patchy and it's skipping and it's streaky and you have to go in and you have to clean it up I'm fine with products that require patience. We've been over this. I love blending. Blending is my therapy. I could sit there and blend for hours if no one would stop me. This isn't what you're doing with this. This is not blending, okay? This thing is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. A terrible blush formula to try to work with. No. This is another product that I randomly pulled out because I was like, I haven't used this in a while. I wonder why. And then very quickly realized why. It's just terrible. It's simply terrible. Simply the worst blush, probably, that I've ever used. And again, I'm not picky about blushes. With lip glosses, highlighters, blushes, I'm not picky. I'm really not. This was a dud. <laughs> this did not work for me, and I don't think it would reasonably work for anybody. If you've gotten it to work for you, good. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. It's not for me, and I wouldn't recommend it based on my experiences with it. Talking fast because my camera battery is dying. Um, these Milani blushes, fucking beautiful, fucking incredible. Uh, they're very, very subtle, just kind of soft washes of color on the cheeks, but they are the kind of blush that, like, if I hadn't worn them with the looks that I wore these with, you would have been like, ooh, she needs some blush. But when they're actually on, you can't even tell what a difference they're making, but they're just such a nice touch. If you're looking for really soft, subtle, neutral blushes, this is a really good formula. Milani just does blushes really well. I said that in my last video too. They do blushes like nobody else. Um, yeah, these are gorgeous. Highly recommend. Subtle, but buildable. But yeah. And this NYX lipstick. I wasn't sure if they still made the extra creamy lipsticks actually and I looked it up and they do. In fact they actually have this exact shade still available. Beautiful formula. Love this so so much. The camera battery did die but now we're back and everything's fine. This is literally the last product that we have to talk about so let me be quick. Uh, I have the shade Snow White. This shade actually is specifically still available. I have a number of shades actually in this formula. Um, I was just saying, like I said, Milani just does blush like nobody else. The same goes for NYX with lip products, in my opinion. They have a little something for everybody, and with most, if not all, of their lipstick formulas, there's just an incredible variety of shades, just a really good range of colors in each uh, formula. This is just really, it's a really nice formula. Very creamy. They are, in fact extra creamy. They just kind of glide on. The lips look very hydrated. This is a great formula. I'm glad that they still have it. I was gonna feel really bad if I used a lipstick formula that was really good that you guys couldn't get anymore, but as it turns out, they do still have the extra creamy lipsticks. Would highly recommend, as well as really any NYX lip products, because even if you don't like this formula, they've probably got another one that you will like. Um, so yeah, there's that. That does it for this video. We had some huge wins and some great big duds. And I also got to brag about some of my faves. So that's always nice. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that it was even remotely interesting to watch and or that it made for a very nice distraction for you if you needed that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I highly, deeply appreciate it. Be sure to tune in for the next video. It's one I've been waiting for a hot minute to be able to film. In fact, I'm still waiting. I'm literally waiting for one more thing to be delivered so that I can film this video that I've been planning for weeks at this point, which is very exciting. Um, it's gonna be a haul video. It's gonna be a haul video of all the stuff that I got um, either gifted to me or that I got to pick out for myself. Uh, for Christmas. Um, so if you're interested in seeing that, uh, I'm kind of makeup. I've been waiting to get my phalanges on for a while now. Uh, be sure to tune in for that. I don't know exactly when it's going up. I will update on my Instagram when I film the video and am editing it so that you will have a general idea. If you don't follow me on Instagram, that will be linked down below. I definitely suggest giving that a follow if you want to know all the behind the scenes stuff, if you want to get notified when videos go up. Or you can just subscribe right here and hit the notification bell and then hopefully it will notify you. Do we even know? Does it? Does it work? Do we know at this point?
Anyway, subscribe if you want, give this video a like if you want, it's highly appreciated, not mandatory, but very appreciated. Follow my Instagram if you want to, we do all kinds of fun stuff over there, all kinds of fun makeup and skincare content that you might not get to see here specifically, so if you're into that, feel free to check that out. Also just check out the description box because there will be all kinds of fun, cool, important links down there that I always put down there for you guys, so be sure to check that out before you leave today. Again, thanks so much for being here, I hope that you enjoyed, I hope to see you back here next time, and I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. Okay, I'll see you guys back here for the next one real soon. Bye. What was that noise? What the fuck? That is better? I don't know. Wow, I cannot speak. Look, it's not a rude. Um, there, don't you do it. Something was about to fall. Don't. With jelly. When you...